It's a sunny day in March in California and Sandra Cantu of eight years of age decides to cross the trailer park to meet with a friend and have some fun playing outside. Several hours pass and she's nowhere to be seen and no clues about her whereabouts were found until 10 days after her disappearance. A neighbor starts acting strangely and with him the horrific truth starts to emerge. Born on March 8, 2001, Sandra lived in Tracy, a small city 20 miles southwest of Stockton, California. She was the youngest of four. She lived with her brothers, mother and grandparents in Orchard State, a local mobile home park. As soon as she was old enough, she would started attending the Jacobson Elementary School. On March 27, 2009, after leaving school, Sandra went to a friend's house to play. Around 4 p.m. she decides to go back home to the trailer park. However, as soon as she arrived, she left again to meet with another friend. The last time anyone saw Sandra, she was wearing a pink top and Hannah Montana flip-flops as she was walking across the trailer park. Hours later, her mother waited for her with dinner ready, but after she failed to show up before 8 p.m., she decided to call the police and report her as a missing person. Soon after the call, the police had managed to get surveillance camera footage that showed the moments before she disappeared in the video. You can see the girl walking across the street in front of her home. Those few seconds of video are all the information the police have. Besides that, it was as if the little girl had vanished from the face of the earth. The hunt for Sandra had begun. The footage was already being distributed through news reports all around the country. As the days passed, investigators looked everywhere in Orchard Estates and had to turn the trailer park upside down. Even when the FBI stepped in, they were unable to find a single clue that could lead them to Sandra's location. After days with no new information passed, a $22,000 reward was offered in return for any details on the disappearance from Sandra and where she might be located. Soon the police had a breakthrough, or at least they thought they had. Apparently a couple years before, a local man had been spotted behaving inappropriately with Sandra at a nearby pool. However, after the due process of investigation, the police ruled out the suspect as there was proof of the man's innocence in the current investigation. Sandra's family was on the edge of their nerves as days passed and they waited in limbo, not knowing what might have happened to the little girl. And then on April 6, some workers made a horrific discovery in a nearby pond. As the days passed since the initial search, the water level of the nearby pond had dropped several feet and from the depths of the pond an abandoned suitcase emerged to the surface inside was Sandra's body found still wearing the same clothes she had when she'd gone missing according to the forensics report Sandra had traces in her blood of a tranquilizer and she'd been submitted to physical and sexual abuse and was smothered to death as police began to search for the culprit of the horrific murder they turned their attention towards all the men that lived in the trailer park no one was clear of suspicion the FBI supplied a very detailed profile of the person who had committed such an atrocious act. According to the Bureau, the person responsible for the crime should be a white male between 25 and 40 years old and he would have a history of deviant behaviors. While police focused on searching for people who matched the profile, Melissa Huckabee, a 28-year-old teacher, started to behave in some bizarre ways. Melissa was the granddaughter of a local pastor and she also lived in the Orchard Estates trailer park with her daughter. She'd often encountered Sandra and in fact she had given some tip-offs to Sandra's grandmother the day the girl went missing According to the police report Melissa had sent a text to Maria Sandra's grandmother informing her of a burglary at her home Tell the police that I had something stolen around 4 p.m. I don't know if it makes any difference or not When they were attending a vigil for Sandra Melissa also claimed that she had found a note Cantu locked in stolen suitcase it read thrown in the water on Bacchetti Road and Whitehall Road, witness. At the moment, investigators paid no attention to her odd behavior and the note until Sandra's body was found in the pond. At that point, all police attention turned immediately onto her. In an instant, she had become the primary suspect in the missing person and murder case. In fact, the item that she had reported stolen was the same suitcase where Sandra's body had been found. Finding it odd that Melissa, owner of the suitcase, would also be the person finding the note. After turning their attention to her, they decided to search the church where her grandfather gave his service. In there, they found a rolling pin marked with a smear of blood. While browsing security footage, police spotted Melissa leaving her home just eight minutes after Sandra was last seen and was also spotted leaving her grandfather's church and returning home 30 minutes later. 
during those 30 minutes two witnesses told police that they'd seen Melissa at the irrigation pond where Sandra's body was discovered she'd been acting oddly and told the couple she'd stopped to urinate when they recognized her on TV they immediately called the police and related what happened that day at the pond Melissa was arrested on suspicion of murder and during the trial the gruesome details of the crime first came to light Melissa had used the pin to sexually assault the little girl before killing her with a makeshift noose It was at this point when Melissa had been found guilty that everyone realized that this was not the first time that she'd committed such crimes It turns out that a couple months earlier another child of Orchard Estate had gone missing But after several hours Melissa turned up at the family's home leading the kid by the hand and even when there was evidence that the child had been drugged no charges were passed against her in June Melissa was found guilty and sentenced to spend the rest of her days behind bars During the trial she distanced herself from the crime saying things like I still cannot understand why I did what I did or This is a question. I will struggle with the rest of my life and while Melissa keeps asking for forgiveness for her crimes Sandra's family have refused to allow her to live without the remorse for her actions